Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So one of the most frequently asked questions we get all the time on the forums and on the Facebook site are, what do I need to start a CNC? Well, this video is specifically designed to demystify what it takes to get started and walk you through all the basic parts required or at least desirable to get your machine off the ground and be effective with your first hobbyist CNC machine. Now there will always be unique needs and individual preferences, so I've broken the costs and the materials down into 10 broad categories and three individual price points. The low end, the middle range, and the super high end if you want to go all in with your hobby. Now this is intended to meet everyone's budget and skill level, so you can customize what you get based on your needs and your skill level. I've compiled the individual parts and the costs of each into a spreadsheet, and I I've included links to where you can buy the parts if you choose to do so. I have linked the spreadsheet down below, which I've made available on my website for free. Hey there, future Tom breaking in. So after many hours and days editing the video, it has come out to be about 35 minutes long, which is probably longer than I really want a single video to be. So I have decided I'm going to break the video into two. So there will be a part one and a part two. So in part one, we will focus on the first five categories. And in part two, we will focus on the second five categories. And then I will summarize the total cost. So if you are anticipating what the total costs are gonna be, you are gonna have to wait till part two. So let's go ahead and get on with the first five categories. So the first category we're gonna dive into here is the machine itself. So for the purpose of this video, I wanted to kind of fix the machine because there are so many different types and models out there on the market. It's impossible to dive deep or even shallow into all the different variants that you can get for your machine. So for this video, I am going to use the Onefinity Woodworker model here, stripped down without the controller or the monitor which comes in at 1946 and 50 cents US dollars. So if you do have a different machine other than Onefinity, then you can just simply subtract that cost from the total and add in the cost of your machine. And that'll tell you about what you can expect to pay relative to this analysis that we're doing on this video. So all right, let's go ahead and get on with the other categories. So the second category for the comparison here is the controller. Now this is the brains of the CNC and they come in lots of different forms for the different machines. So starting on the low end, you can get something very simplistic like you would get with a Shapeoko or with an X-Carve that just has the ability to drive the machine. And so if that is the case, then you will need some sort of external computer tethered to your machine while it's doing the cut to control the actual operations. So what those type of controllers do is they simply just interpret your G-code and then send that to the motors and control your machine something has to send the g-code to those controllers and that is usually a computer and that middle tier is really something like the controller from the onefinity system here which actually has a built-in raspberry pi so that serves as the computer so you don't have to have a computer tethered to your machine while you're doing operations and because of this it's a little bit more complicated a little bit more expensive but it does remove that extra variable so you can trust that when you upload your file to your controller, it's simply just going to send it to your machine and you can more or less leave your machine unattended while it's doing its operations. Now I will caveat that by saying I never recommend leaving your machine unattended while it is doing operations. There are a lot of things that can go wrong like your work piece coming loose or you're breaking a bit or a variety of other things. So you definitely keep an eye on your machine while it's cutting, but it does remove one more variable from the overall set of operations. On the higher end, you can get something like a Maso G3 control system with some Gecko drivers and then an external power supply. These three components together build kind of what you have here in the uh, all included kind of box from the Onefinity. Uh, but it is definitely a step up because it does allow you to expand the system. So the base units come with basic three axis milling. This is what you get with the Onefinity. Uh, with something like the Maso and the Gecko, you can upgrade to 
4 and 5 axis milling if you choose to do so in the future. And that's not really an option for something like this that is all integrated. So what are all these different configurations going to cost you? Well, on the low end, it's gonna cost you around two or $300 for something like the Inventables controller, otherwise known as the X controller. At the mid tier, you do have the Onefinity controller here, which is around $380 US. And then on that upper tier, uh, it's gonna cost you around $855 or so for the different components of the Maso, the uh, Gecko drivers and a power supply. Now, obviously you can go higher and get more expensive things, more drivers, more axes, uh, higher power, better steppers, and whatnot. But for this comparison, I think those are pretty good ranges of the different price points as well as the different capability and feature sets for your controller. The third category I would like to cover here are the spindles required for the CNC. Now, some CNC models do come with a spindle and some do not. The Onefinity, for example, does not come with a spindle. However, it is designed to be used with the Makita router, which is what I have right here. Now, the Makita on the low end retails for around $119, although it has been seen on Amazon recently for as low as $73 for a new unit not refurbished. So I think that's a pretty good deal. Stepping up a notch on spindles, you can go for an actual variable frequency drive spindle system around the 1.5 kilowatt range in this 65 millimeter mount. And so that comes in around $280 US. So taking spindles to the highest level, you can get the 2.2 kilowatt unit. Uh, these units are usually 80 millimeters, so you will need to get the upgraded spindle mount from Onefinity if you have one of these or whatever the mount is for your specific machine. They are also so generally water cooled which makes them a little bit more complicated to use because you do have to run the hoses in addition to the power and the control uh, back to the unit and then because of this they are also more expensive around $420 it is not significantly more expensive than the lower unit which is 1.5 kilowatts that is air cooled but it's a significant uplift when compared to something as simple as the Makita router The next area I would like to get into are the bits that you will need for your CNC. Now this is generally about the most popular question right next to what feeds and speeds should I be operating at. And so I will tell you there are a tremendous number of different configurations you can get for the bits of your CNC machine. And I'm gonna walk you through some of the different categories that I think that are most appropriate for beginners. And if you're not familiar with some of the terminology that I'm using here, I have created a video on bits, which I will link above and below, that goes into a lot more depth about the different types of bits that you can get and why you would want to choose one over the other. So let's go ahead and get on with the different type of bits that I'm recommending. Now, starting out on the low end of the bits, I have a number of the bits that I have personally used spread out on the tabletop here to show you the different varieties that I recommend getting as a beginner CNC. So kind of starting at the bottom and then working my way around, I do have a series of small diameter eighth inch shank bits that I use very frequently and they are very inexpensive. I get them on eBay and a 10 pack of these bits for example is around $30. Now to compare and contrast that a single high-end bit from something like Amana is going to be in the $30 to $40 range so you really can maximize your value and these are really great bits. I have been using them for years. I've never replaced them. I have broken a few of them, but I've never replaced them. So I do think they are a great way to get into the CNC and not spend a lot of money. Now next is a quarter inch shank and a quarter inch cutting bit. This is a budget bit as well. I believe I got it from eBay. It was around 15 to $20 or so for the bit. And I find these very useful for removing a lot of material uh, and do a lot of general milling, especially if I'm making a large pocket, something like this is going to cut much, much faster than a smaller bit like the eighth inch. I will say that these 
quarter inch and this eighth inch bit, these two bits are my go-to bits for a lot of my milling. Regardless of the quality of the bit or the source of the bit, these two sizes I find to be the most versatile. I really only use the 16th and the 1 32nd inch bit on occasion when I need to do some fine milling. Coming around to the top here, I have laid out a handful of the V cutters that I have. These are very budget bits. They are not very expensive at all. Uh, and they have taken a lot of abuse over the years. I think at least two of them don't have tips anymore because I've broken them off for one reason or another. Uh, but I do recommend getting a 90, 60, and 45 degree V-bit. If you don't want to make the full investment, then a 90 and 60 are perhaps the most versatile. They allow you to remove the most amount of material while still being fairly tight in the corners for the types of lettering you might want to make or some of the V-carving you might want to do. The last bit that I would like to point out here is this spoil board bit or this flattening bit. This is one inch in diameter and they're also very expensive. You can get them just about anywhere. I think I got this one at the hardware store, but you can get them on Amazon for around $20. And so it's a great investment, especially when you want to flatten your spoil board or anything else really, or remove a lot of material. The only thing that I will say is you need to be careful with this specific bit because it does not have cutters in the middle here. So you cannot plunge route with this bit. You do need to enter your material from the side so that you can engage these cutters while you're doing your operation. Jumping into the middle tier of bits. Now what I do recommend doing is keeping all of your budget bits but then upgrading to bits that maybe are more expensive as you need them and that gets you into that middle tier. So what I have here are a bunch of bits that I've most recently purchased from Tools Today. They are Amana bits and they are spectra coded in large part. I will talk about the two bits on the top there in just a minute. And so what you have here is an up cunt quarter inch bit to flute this is the same exact bit as the budget bit, except it is the Spectra coating. Next, what you have is a quarter inch two flute down cut bit. I am starting to use a lot of down cut bits. They do provide a much greater surface finish on your material, so they are very handy. Next, I have a one flute eighth inch cutting bit. These are really great for plastics and acrylics. I have a project coming up where I have to cut a lot of acrylic, so I will be using this bit a lot. These two bits are fine V cutters as well, just like the previous versions. They have a much steeper pitch, however. I believe this is a seven degree pitch and this one is a 22 degree pitch, which are half of the 45 degree and then a quarter of that. So uh, these will allow you to get into fine places. You do not remove a lot of material with them, but if you are doing engraving of some fine text, these bits will be invaluable to you. Now, something I do recommend also in the kind of middle tier here is getting some of these more specialty bits here. This is a bowl cutting bit and then this is just a round profile bit. So this bit allows you to remove a lot of of material and it creates this nice profile edge and so it's great for making those bowls. This bit I use for juice grooves on my cutting boards. It creates a really nice profile and you can get down into the cutting board and remove a lot of material. So these bits are not very expensive but they are specialty so if you don't need them I do not recommend buying them. Now going all in with your bits, you can get a variety of bits with a lot of different functions and purpose. So for example, this taper bit is very useful because it can serve the same purpose as a V cutter, but you can use it as a regular two flute cutting bit. And so this can be very useful. Uh, if you want a general purpose bit that has a lot of flexibility to it. Next, you have something like this V carver with a replaceable bit. This bit is very valuable because it does have this replaceable cutter on it. And so that allows you to just replace the blade rather than the entire bit when it gets dull. And so it does cost a little bit more, but the blades are about a quarter of the cost of the cutter itself. So in the end, rather than replacing the entire cutter, you're just replacing the blades you're saving money overall. Another bit that I would recommend getting if you want to sort of go all in is this very large fly cutter. It also has replaceable cutters just like the V-Carver here. It is very large and it removes a lot of material. It is very heavy and beefy. It is also very expensive. This bit alone is around $147, which is about what all of these bit costs combined. 
So it is an expensive investment, but it is well worth it if you are doing a lot of flattening of slabs or if you're doing uh, something that requires the removing of a lot of material. Once again, I do want to caution you, there are no bits in the center here, so you can't just plunge into your material with this. You do need to enter from the side. Now also laid out here, you can see I have some uh, multi-packs of the various bits that I use that are the smaller diameter. And I think you can see which ones are more fragile and which ones are not. The 32nd inch bits here, I break break a lot, or I break more, I should say, than the 16th inch bits than the 8th inch bits. In fact, I think I've only ever broken one or two 8th inch bit, and I do use this 8th inch bit for, I would say, 90% of my milling that requires any sort of level of fine control. And so this entire 10 pack, I believe, was around $36 on eBay, whereas this bit alone was $47. So you really can go all in and get a lot of variety, or you can get a couple multi-packs get a lot of flexibility and still get a good value across all your different uses of these different bits. So what are all these bits going to cost you? Well, on the low end with a handful of these smaller diameter bits, it's gonna cost around $116. Upgrading to some of the Amana bits, a select few of those, that brings the bit cost around $271. And then kind of sort of going again, all in with all of these different variety of bits and some of these replaceable cutters, it's going to be around $493. So close to $500 in the bits alone. Wow. it's a lot of money. All right, well, that brings us to the end of the first part of the video. I hope you are enjoying it so far. So we ran through the cost of the machine, the cost of the controller, the cost of the spindle, and the cost of the bits. So let's go ahead and tally up where we are in the story so far and prepare for part two of the video. All right, so the machine cost comes in at 1946, which is a fairly decent cost for the quality of something like the Onefinity. Once again, your machine might cost differently, so you just subtract out that 1946 from the total and put in your machine cost and everything else should be good to go. All right, well, the controllers cost anywhere from $299 all the way up to $855. The spindle can cost anywhere from $73, if you get a good sell on Amazon for the Makita router, all the way up to $421. And then the bits can range anywhere from $116 all the way up to $493, and even higher if you buy a lot of different varieties. All right, so where does that leave us for the costs across the five categories? that we've done so far. All right, on the low range, we are coming in around $489 for a total cost of $24.35. On that mid range, we are coming in around $893 for a total of $28.39. And then on that high range, we are coming in at $17.69 for a total cost of $3,715. And that is a lot of money, and we still have five more categories to go. Well, I hope you are enjoying this video series. Please come back for part two. I plan to do videos like this in the future, so if you like it, please consider subscribing. Ringing that bell, very important these days. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that become future videos. If you like this video, please consider giving a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway, but leave your comments down below. Tell us why, so we can make future videos better. All right, once again, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you so much for getting this far, and don't forget to be inspired. All right, thank you again so much for getting this far. Thank you so much for the video. And don't forget to be inspired. Now I happen to have a shop vac here with a, <clears throat> what the hell is it called? Vortex. Yeah. All right, so that brings the total in at some number that I haven't computed yet. So we should probably do that. Stand by. <laughs>